So if you're watching this video, there's a chance that you purchased a drag chain. It's a drag chain for a Journeyman X50 from Onefinity. Uh, this will also fit an X35. However, you will not need all the drag chain. So uh, we'll start out by unboxing. So it should come in a box similar to this. With the, the paperwork involved, there will be some instructions. Uh, you'll get more out of this video than the instructions, but also you'll have a, a list of all the components and how they're referenced, as well as the amount included in the box. So inside the box, there will be a bag of uh, these. There's a uh, 100 pieces of the drag chain link top. That's this piece right here. Uh, chain link top. There's another bag. And within this bag, there are several different parts. So open it up. Including the table link. I think that's on the second page. Yeah, table link. And this is what you'll use if you're uh, going under the table and I'll show you later. This is a cap for that. Um, link, table link cover. And then these are the extrusion brackets. Over on the other side, aluminum extrusion brackets. You, you get more of those. Also have, this is the left side bracket so everything is referenced right now i'm standing in the back of my machine the spindles right there so i, I reference this side as the left this side as the right and then the z-axis so this one will go over there you have the z-axis bracket it will go up there and you also have the cover with the two fasteners that I include. And then we have, this is the right side bracket, we'll go over there. And then finally you get two links of drag chain. This, this one We'll go on the side. Something you may have noticed is I already have my drag chain here. I took everything off the mill for uh, this demonstration. Uh, I've had this drag chain on here for running for about a year and it still performs very well. And this is, this is what you just purchased. Then you also have the longer drag chain that will go in the back. I'll start out by Going over here, you'll need a four millimeter Allen wrench to take these two out. And these came with my machine. Um, I guess I'm assuming that they still come with the machine. If not, please let me know. And then, so you take the two out over there. Also take the two out over here. These were all loose when I got the machine. I changed my cabling a little bit, but if you notice, you'll have, this is a, a, a cover that incorporates the plug. I, think, I believe it was for the Z axis. And I designed the bracket to go around that. So you do not have to remove that. You can leave it on if you want. And if you're going to still use it, that's great. But you don't need it. You'll need to supply the extrusion. Uh, I think it's 57 inches that you'll need on the X50. On the X35, you'll have to measure it. And uh, in order to measure it, what you can do is... I'm going to try to do this one-handed. So you'll put... So you'll see the two holes. Put it through the first hole. And then 
thread it in. Something to keep in mind when you're threading these in, do not over tighten them because it's plastic and plastic is susceptible to breaking. So yeah, just uh, tighten it up. Once you get finger tight, just go a little bit more with the wrench. Doesn't take much to keep it on. Just like that, like that. It becomes very solid. And then you'll do the same over here. Let's see, with this piece, put it on over here. Faster on and get it started. Get the other one. Get it started. And then do another tighten up. And just a little bit of tight becomes very rigid and solid. You do not have to over tighten this. So when I reference the 57 inches, it is from inside of here, you can see the two tracks right there and right there. That's where the extrusion goes all the way to over on this side. Uh, and there's the pocket that the extrusion goes into. So if you take your tape measure, sorry about the video jumping around a little bit, Put it over at the back side. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I said 57. You need 55 inches. Um, so a five foot, you'll cut to 55 inches. So you'll cut it 57 inches. Uh, but for the X35, that's how you measure how long it'll need to be. And you do not want to put, or you can't put it on, the extrusion, you can't put it on with the bracket on, because you have to slide it in. And I would also recommend starting with this side, having the extrusion go in. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand. Uh, I'll prop the phone and then show you how it goes. So, so the extrusion that you need should be one half, that's, that's exactly right there, by right there. So, um, oh, and then a sixteenth or sixty thou. 60 thou thick, right there. Um, yeah, there's uh, some extrusion has a looser tolerance, so if if it becomes too much of a press fit in here, you may have to shave some of the extrusion down. So I'm going to attempt, well, actually, I'm gonna show you how to do it with these short pieces. What you can do is you tip it, what you don't want to do is hold it with this hand like that and try to ram it in because you could slip and go into there. So what you can do is put it on its side and then oops, put it on its side, get it started. It's a lot easier with two hands. And that's you know, here, it's a little bit of a press fit. It goes in pretty nice and it stays in. Uh, so I'm going to put the phone down and put the larger extrusion in. Okay, so with the longer extrusion in, you can find the one and that. So the one that I took out of the package. This is a defective one that I'm gonna just use for a little bit of a printing issue. The one I took out of the package is back in the package. Right, 
okay with extrusion in there you can start the top and again because it's not a lot of weight you don't even have to tighten it up so you come over here and what you want to do is for over here you have to line up over here you have to line up both of them at the same time this is a little tricky with one hand so I've got them lined up I'm gonna set the phone down and push it in and what you want to do is as you push it in push it in only to the point that these the holes line up with this something I'm gonna reiterate is when you cut these make sure you file them very good because you don't want to when you're sliding the extrusion or the, the, the bracket on you don't want it shaving the uh, material. Look, I'll just line the two up. The two up. And then gently work it back and forth. <clears throat> gently work it back and forth. Right now, you could easily, if you, if you push on this, you could easily break that down there. So just grip the extrusion hard and then just gently slide each side in and then just continually make sure, watch for the, watch for it. Matching up. Something I realized uh, when you do this, you wanna have both fasteners in down here before you start. So. Start with one fastener because you're going to have this at an angle as it rests on the table over there. Once you get that side on, come back over here, put the other fastener in. That way it's held square. And that way it doesn't rotate like this, making it shorter or make it, um, skewing the length of the extrusion and the location of the hole. So it looks like I need to work it a little bit further in. So I got it lined up, I got the first one in there. And then, so it cut, cut at 55, you have a little bit of room there. And over on this side, it's butted up against on both sides pretty close. So you have a little bit of room to spare. Uh, overall, there's a little bit more than an inch. So, I mean, if you cut it a little bit short, the, it can accommodate or it can take up the slack. So, and then, uh, so put that one fastener in, and then, and then the second one will go in. Just give it a tighten. Again, do not over tighten. Word for today is do not over tighten. Okay, next thing you want to do is you have four of these brackets, and you can space them out however you want. That just uh, keeps it from falling apart or spread it out because I mean, at, at this length at this length you can bend it fairly easy but with four of these on here it comes pretty tough pretty good so in, in order to put these on you just hang it and bring it up and it'll snap in and then on the other side do the same thing I'm, I'm gonna need Two, two fingers, two hands, because you need to, well, maybe not. But yeah, there we go. But it just makes it a lot more rigid. So uh, for the video, I'm not gonna put all four on, but I, I would recommend using all four throughout here. Just again, equally space them. So you got, you got the left side, the right side now let's do the top uh, this came with I'm not sure where my cover is but came with a cover with two fasteners that um, covered the, the z-axis as well as well, actually I think it was just the z-axis yeah and, and it ran through so you'll take that off I don't think I have that anymore, but you'll you'll need keep these screws because you'll need them. 
and so this comes assembled. These screws go into a, uh, they fasten, they screw into plastic, uh, so it's easy to strip them. Again, be careful when you're tightening them. But for right now, you just want to take this apart. So these are the two fasteners that were supplied with this kit. With this kit, you can see they're a little bit longer. So the longer ones go into the hole up here. And then on this piece, you can see these are taller, this is shorter. These go into the shorter holes. So those two go up here and line up. Those two go line up in the back. So I'm trying to hold the phone. See if I can find where they go. Right there. And you can screw it in. Screw that one in. Again, does not have to be incredibly tight. So Side note, all these parts are 3D printed and you'll see every occasionally there's there'll be something. I try to trim as much as possible, but every now and then you'll see some of the flaws that come with come along with 3D printing. Um, try to make it aesthetically the best looking print. However, sometimes uh, it just doesn't just doesn't work out great. But you can see how this rests along here. And with those two screws becomes very rigid and with this uh, so then you can place so there's two channels here and here there should be plenty of room for all the cables that you need um, I run uh, a 24 watt laser so there's this cable and an air tube <clears throat> I have my spindle cable and my z-axis and there's still plenty of room for uh, if you're running a spindle that has, is water cooled, should still be plenty of room in there. When you put this on, you can see there's lots of lots of room. So uh, where'd the wrench go? So with this placed on top, again start screwing it down, and you'll find the hole. So these do go all the way through, or the holes go all the way through, however they do not thread into the machine on the front, just the back two. These two go down, when it hits bottom, they stop tightening. It would be easy to strip it if you wanted to, it doesn't take much. And what's nice, if you have the 24 watt, and I think it will fit the other lasers, uh, I just, I know it fits the 24 watt. It's nice because you can store it there when you're not using it. And you can also store a spacer in there. There's enough room with the cables. <clears throat> okay, so you have the top, the, the Z-axis bracket mounted, the left bracket mounted, and the right bracket mounted. Now it's time to connect the drag chain. On the drag chain, there is a male side. There's a male side. And then a female side. And you'll notice up here this already has the male side incorporated into it. This has the female side. So you'll start with the male side up here and the female side down here. And then over here, you have the female side again. So what you want to do is make sure you start with the female side. Fold the chain in half like this. Place it in the extrusion. And this is a pretty tight fit. To go into here. So uh, this, is, this is the longer but this is the longer drag chain link. Okay, I got my stand, so it should be a lot easier to see. So in order to start, what you can do is separate one of the links. It makes it a little bit easier. And you can do this by squeezing in a little bit on one side 
and then it comes off. Uh, I've, I've assembled literally hundreds of these, so it's a lot easier for me to do it. Um, I included five extra links and tops in the package just in case something breaks while you're doing it. So in order to get this in, you just have to use a little bit of pressure. And it'll go in. You may want to put this on before you put it on here. So that's actually, I think, future shipments, I'll leave that on there. But you can see it's, it's locked in there. If you want to take it off, a very small screwdriver is useful in just prying one side. Get one side loose and then work it out. Now this is very rigid, unlike the rest of the links. That's why it's a little bit tougher to get in there. But you can see it does hold up to it. And then you can place the rest of the drag chain in there. And with the two sections being a little bit thinner wall, this moves and this moves a little bit, so it's easier to connect these two. Up top, so it'll go down and around and back up top. So now you're dealing with, now it's uh, upside down. So you've got the chain locked in down there and you got it filling the extrusion to the one side. Now this is the last one to connect. You'll have your wire coming out of here and then you can rest it in the drag chain because once you connect this it becomes a uh, it becomes uh, enclosed within here. So in order to do this, you can leave this one connected and just try to work one side on first and then the other side. And it becomes rigid up there. No fasteners or anything, it snaps on. And the same thing with uh, another one or any of the drag chains with a really small screwdriver, you can go in here and pry it out. Now, once you have your wire in here and you you know, you want to leave some length for the movement of Z-axis uh, up and down. But once you have the length established, what you can do is you go into the bag of tops and you start snapping the tops on. You'll hold the wires and then put the top on. And when you first start doing this, it'll be a little bit difficult until you get the hang of it. And then keeping the wire there, what you do is on this, you'll see inside of there, sorry about that, you'll see inside of there, there's a little lip in there. And you'll see on the side of the drag chain, let me try to get it in there close. So you will, well, it's also important to have, so on the drag chain, there's one side that's almost a 90 and one side that's about a 30 degree. You want the 90 side against the next chain link. So you'll Come in there, you'll catch that groove and just push it on to the other side. And you'll hear it click in once you do it. See? So if you go on the other side, oops, just click it in. And you do that a hundred times. It's a little bit tedious. So what I like about the design, oh, the reason I designed it not to be captured is uh, for a couple reasons. One, the captured ones, uh, as I was taking them on and off and adding cables and messing around with the cables, uh, it was clear that um, it was easy, going to be easy to break. And so what I did was demonstrate on the extra piece here. 
what I did was I, I created this uh, this removable top, and again, so it just snaps on. Now uh, the top itself is pretty thin, right? It moves, bends easy. But once it's on here, it's not going to take a lot of uh, pressure. But what's nice is flip that over. When it does, if you do try to pull it out, it can take a lot of pressure. And what happens is it squeezes harder as you pull up. It squeezes the two sides in, so it becomes a very strong, a very strong system. So you'll go through, and you'll put everything through. The wires will come out here. You're going to incorporate your x-axis wire. It's going to come out here also. And then over here, you'll be able to see how I have it on my machine, uh, the, the existing drag chain. Um, so you'll have the wires coming through this channel, and then it hooks up the same way as the old, uh, as the uh, other side. Again, this will be upside down. This is the female side, this is the male side. With this upside down, or the solid piece, just, just snap it in there. It'll go around, you'll continue. And then, let me show you the way I have mine set up. The way I have my, uh, all my electronics, I have the table clear except for the except for the uh, monitor. But I drilled a hole where all the cables go into it. It's a one inch hole. They come down through there. And then I created this cabinet that houses my variable drive. Uh, I've got some other circuits there. Uh, I need to wire in the pump and I've got a main shutoff. I also incorporated outlets for the controller uh, for the monitor, the controller, the uh, laser controller. So all of mine go down there. It's about, if you look at it, it's about in the middle of the table where it goes down. Um, there's plenty of drag chain for it to reach both sides easily. And something that I did change from when I made mine is... Originally, I had it for a one-inch hole, but uh, which was fine for mine. However, if you're going to use a water line, a water-cooled spindle, you're going to need a larger hole. And so what I did is I redesigned this piece. And this piece, again, the drag chain will end with a female side. And this starts with a, a male side. And what you'll do, if you want to drill a hole, you'll drill a hole. Let's use this as an example. And then you just come up close to it. And then there's two fastener holes. You can drill it into the table. And with that drilled into the table, you have your cover. That, this is a little bit of a tight fit also. But it just slides. It'll slide together. And this is a pretty tight fit. So I'm not gonna put it together. You can put it together and take it apart. Uh, but what it does is it creates a hole in the bottom and that's a nice cap to help prevent shavings from going down in there. And that would be the last component to get the system up and running. Um, if you have any questions, I'll have my, uh, I, with the shipment on the paperwork, I have my email address. Um, I'm happy to help you through any part of the assembly. Uh, if you come across something that's not fitting quite right, uh, I think, I, I believe the machines are still made the same way and the holes should line up. But if it's not fitting right, uh, try not to force it. The, you know, plastic isn't like steel. Uh, it, it could break and before you break it, please, please contact me. I'm happy to, I'm happy to help you through any problems. Uh, if something does, if you end up breaking something, uh, you know, let me know. We'll work it out. Uh, also, if you see something wrong with the design or something that could be made better, I'm absolutely open to suggestions. Any help is appreciated. So 
with that, I, I believe that's, that takes care of everything. Um, I wish you the best of luck, and I greatly appreciate uh, if you're watching this video because you purchased the drag chain from me. Greatly appreciate it, and I wish you the best of luck. Happy milling. Last part of the video, I thought I'd show you. Uh, here's uh, an, an anchor make from five, working on 20 links of the chain. Um, just to let you know, you guys know, uh, this takes takes about 40 hours to print everything. And you can see there, that much of a print, and there's still an hour and 52 minutes. So th this takes, uh, I think this was a seven hour cycle. I uh, have another one putting the, the tops over here, but um, something that's just 20 of them. So it's 35 hours just on the, uh, no, actually, I think it's five hours, but it's, so it's 25 hours just putting the, the chain out. Uh, so again, I uh, hope it works out for you. Thank you. So here's the top with, once it's assembled, the two fasteners and uh, the air nozzle fits on this side with that cut out. Uh, I have two lines here and you can see there's a lot of room left and two lines here, there's a lot of room left so you could do even more. Um, over here you see this cable just comes back, comes into there. Uh, I don't have anything tying these on, they're stationary, they're not going to move anywhere. And there's also enough space to keep your Z-axis offset tool and laser up there.